Space travel is a rarefied domain. Out of the 568 people who have been to space, very few have been women, non-white, or LGBTQ. But representation alone won't change our relationship to space if our imaginaries remain tied to the frames of governmental or commercial interests. We need new modes of thinking, new ways of materializing our relationship with outer space. In the fall of 2019, I was given the chance to make a work that would orbit the Earth aboard the International Space Station. Through the Sojourner 2020 project and a launch opportunity provided by the MIT Space Exploration Initiative, nine artist groups were selected through an international open call. The project I made is entitled TX1. It draws upon one aspect of my identity, being a transgender woman. Coupled to this is the fact that I have, at times, found this otherwise enchanting Earth so inhospitable that I had a desire to travel to space, to find a new, more welcoming home out there. While my connection to all of this is tied strongly to being transgender, it undoubtedly can also speak to anyone who has found themselves marked as other, as alien. Transgender people modify ourselves through social and biological technologies, altering our surfaces, our viscera, our hormonal molecular balances. These modifications are also necessary experiences for living in extraterrestrial environments. Decades before Haraway's elaboration of the cyborg, Manfred Klein's and Nathan Klein argued that space travel would require alteration of the human body into something that is no longer entirely human, something alien, something cyborg, a homeostatic merging of viscera and machine. And in many ways, every human being who has gone to space is a trans body through biomedical interventions and alterations due to being in microgravity. Yet transgender people, as well as any body seen as different from the idealized norm, are likely to be disqualified from consideration as astronauts because of the biomedical changes that we choose to make. To create a symbolic exodus to outer space, in TX1, I handmade three resin spheres that encased bits of my hormone replacement medications, each sphere being around four to five millimeters in diameter. The first sphere included a fragment of my spironolactone pill, which is taken to suppress testosterone. The second sphere encased a slice of a worn Viveldot estradiol patch, which provides me with exogenous estrogen. And the third sphere contained a handmade abaca paper sculpture to gesture towards all of the other Xeno entities that could not be included in this project. These spheres were sealed inside a machined polycarbonate vessel. TX1 and the other Sojourner 2020 projects launched on March 7, 2020 on our CRS-20 resupply mission to the International Space Station. Once aboard, we received one downlink of video from the three-layer structure that housed the projects, with some layers rotating in order to simulate Mars and Moon gravity. TX1 was on the Moon layer in a nod towards the feminine understanding of Luna. TX1 and the other projects returned to Earth on April 7, 2020. The safe return of TX1 was a sign of resilience, of not being disposed of through incineration in the atmosphere, of coming back to thrive once again. The month-long orbit of TX1 marks the first known time that elements of the transgender experience have orbited the Earth. Having been in space, the return spheres now possess a certain intangible aura, an aura that is simply the result of the rarity of leaving from and returning to Earth's gravity. Such an aura does not have to be tied to militaristic control of space territory, outmoded fantasies of colonization, or dreams of asteroid riches. Instead, we can draw upon the power of this aura to rework our outer space imaginaries towards new ways of being here on this planet, in this cosmos, now.